So as I mentioned, the uh, Greenwich Sound Image Festival is in its fifth year this year. We normally have an academic conference with talks and concerts, but uh, this year with lockdown, we've moved into a more virtual mode. Um, you can see the poster on the screen of the various activities. We still do have some physical installations that are running. Uh, so we've taken over a shop unit in Greenwich Market and uh, we have uh, a gallery at uh, the Stockwell Street building in Greenwich. Um, so you can view both of these from the outside. There's a little QR code on the window so you can scan and get the sound to play on your own device. Um, but we have also created, I've been busily capturing um, some immersive 3D content. So for example, uh, this is a very quick view of one of the exhibitions that is now filmed in 360. So all of this uh, online content will go up so that people can experience the festival in a virtual way. Um, so I'll share these details will come out with uh, with uh, some in more information about this uh, workshop so I will uh, make sure that you have links to those so please do check out and take a look at the other activities that are in the festival um, of course the best form of uh, virtual engagement is this kind right here so we're really absolutely delighted that you are here with us this morning Thank you so much uh, to everyone who's already posted in the chat. I know there are a few more people who've joined us. So if you haven't yet, we'd love it if you would uh, post in the chat, just let us know where you're tuning in from and uh, tell us a little bit about your uh, experience with sound, what, what tempts you to come here, um, as well as uh, a little bit of technical information. It's really useful for us to know if you guys are using either an iPhone or an Android telephone, uh, because that uh, changes some of the technical details. So if you could post in about that, that would be absolutely fantastic. And uh, also let us know uh, if you've had any experience with uh, any sound editing or sound recording already, because that uh, helps us know uh, we need to cover all of the bases or if we can jump ahead. Um, but don't worry if you haven't that's absolutely fine we will be uh, the idea of this workshop is by the end of it you will be empowered and uh, inspired to create your very own sound maps of Greenwich so again welcome I'm going to stop talking now and I'm going to hand over to Andrew and uh, Martin and uh, there are just a couple more people joining, but I shall keep letting new people join. And uh, Andrew, Martin, thank you so much for generously running this workshop for us. And we're really excited to learn more about making sound maps. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, well, thanks everyone for um, coming along. And it's a Saturday morning, so I get the impression that some people aren't here yet. Some people probably haven't even got out of bed, so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see how we get on. Um, anyway, just a quick introduction. First of all, I'm, my name's Andrew Stuck. I'm actually based in Greenwich, so it's quite fortuitous. I'm, I'm um, uh, very close by to the university. Um, I'm, I'm a bit of a rank amateur on this sound uh, stuff. I've been podcasting for 12 years, um, but I've never been on any course apart from an occasional workshop. So it's all been through trial and error. And um, I've made a few sound walks in my time. And in fact, for the festival, I've made a sound walk. So um, if you dare to step out and try out my geolocated sound walk, um, I hope you'll enjoy it. Um, um, OK, so there are two of us here, but one of us is um, uh, not visible. And um, his name is Martin uh, Barsky. And Martin, will you like to introduce yourself and explain why you're not visible? <laughs> uh, hello, everyone. It's really nice to, to speak to you all. Uh, I'm not based in Greenwich. I'm based in Krakow, Poland. So, uh, so um, I don't really know Greenwich that well, although I've been there. It's a beautiful place. It's a, it's a, it's a beautiful area. Uh, but I'm here to speak with you about uh, geolocative uh, sound works. 
And I've been working with this kind of uh, artistic uh, activities for about 10 years now, started about 10 years ago, when I met someone doing this kind of thing in Barcelona and I immediately fell in love with the, with the idea and with the, the possi possibilities it gives. Uh, so yes, it started uh, quite a while ago and uh, in my artistic practice I've been using uh, various geolocative uh, mobile apps that we will uh, talk about in this workshop, but also the very analog kind of uh, uh, sandworks and approaches to sandworks of which I'm going to speak to you later on as well. Great, okay, so uh, the, uh, oops. Uh, one thing you'll discover very quickly is that I'm completely useless at moving on the slides. So I'm a rank amateur at that as well. So we'll probably run through more slides than you can imagine. Um, okay, so what, what are we gonna try and do today? Uh, what we're going to try and um, uh, cover uh, is we're going to get you to write a literary walk um, and submit it to something called Shorelines um, and perhaps think about recording a soundscape as well. Um, we're going to uh, talk about recording and editing um, uh, a, 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 and publishing a sound walk and submitting it to something called Walk, Listen, Create. Um, we're going to do the recording on your smartphone, so I hope you have your smartphone to hand because we're actually going to do a practical hands-on recording with your smartphone. So please, if you can reach for your smartphone, that's great. Or if you have a recorder, uh, reach for that as well. And we're also going to uh, uh, show you something about geolocative um, sound walking and placing sounds uh, on digital layers on a map. So, um, over to you, Martin. Yes, yeah, so uh, probably it would be best to actually start with some basic definitions, because sound work as an idea may sound a little bit abstract to those of you who are not really familiar with the idea. Uh, so while I'm uh, speaking about basic definitions, I, I would like to ask all of you to uh, write in the chat uh, if you have an experience with, with sandworks and uh, what your understanding of the term is. This will be very helpful to discuss things further on. Uh, but the basic definition is basically uh, that a sandwalk is, a, is, a, is actually any kind of activity that involves both walking and some form of listening. And as you can imagine, uh, listening is happening all the time. We, we can't stop listening because this, this is happening without our conscience, without our understanding of, of the process itself. Our brain processes loads of information that we hear. Uh, but the idea of soundworks actually is uh, related to a very focused and very, very, uh, very defined way of listening to the world and not only. So, uh, in this huge cloud of sounds that surrounds us, that we call soundscapes, we can actually ask our uh, walkers, people that we are working with uh, during the sound walk, to actually focus on some of the information, audio information that we want to put in, in focus for, 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 for the walk or the story that we are telling. And what is really important is that uh, sound walking does not only relate to the natural sounds that are uh, surrounding us all the time. It can also refer to the sounds that we actually want to layer over the real nature sounds that you have out there. Um, listening uh, can uh, uh, can lead us to a very meditative, meditative state of mind, which is a very beautiful phenomenon and a beautiful moment in your life, obviously. So you have obviously experienced this on a number of occasions, right? You went to the woods or you went to the meadow and uh, or stood by the water or wherever in, in a very, very natural area. Or actually even in the city, the, the city sounds can be calming very, very much too, uh, if, you, if, you, if you decide to listen to them properly. Uh, but on top of those things, there are plenty of stories that we can actually tell uh, in, a, in, in a number of ways. What I'm doing in my practice uh, is that I'm using um, geolocative uh, uh, mobile apps, which, which are apps that allow um, for putting sounds into very specific locations. Sounds that you can listen to from your uh, mobile devices. So imagine you can walk to a meadow, get into this very beautiful meditative sta state of mind while listening to the, to, the, uh, to the plants or to the animals, to the birds singing and so on and so on and so on. 
And then on top of this, you have a pre-recorded set of sounds uh, uh, coming from your mobile through your headphones or through the mobile, mobile, mobile speakers, right? And this, this can be pretty much anything. This can be, uh, this can be a narrative, a little bit of speaking, this can be a pre-recorded music, this, this can be an extra uh, um, field recording of, of uh, nature sound that sometimes, some, sometimes combines with, uh, with the real sounds or sometimes stands in the in a very contradictory uh, way, uh, very opposed to, to what you're hearing uh, all around you. So, so th this is basically the, the idea of uh, what we are doing with the, with the mobile apps. But there are plenty of other strat strategies too, right? You can um, actually lead people to uh, go into the area that you want to cover with your sound work. And basically, in the, in, in the, and this is the, the easiest way, you can basically give them instructions on how to, how to proceed within this area. They can, uh, Follow your instructions. Instructions such as uh, stop here for five minutes and to try to hear a, a bad song, or, or, or another example would be I don't know, uh, go to the next crossroads and uh, try to think about the first crossroads you've ever encountered in your life. These kind of things, and as you can imagine, this, this leads to a very, very, very uh, immersive experience for, for the listeners. So, so basically, these are the definitions of, of things uh, I work with. And I was speaking so, so much that I didn't have a chance to read through, through what you've uh, written in the, in the chat. So maybe Andrew can help me with this if there are any questions there. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, no one has yet dared to put their own definition of listening or a sound walk down. So, uh, we're, but we've got a few questions coming, which is great. What, what, what we want you to do is to put questions into the chat. During the, um, the, the workshop, we're going to try and answer as many as possible. But obviously, there are some of you in the uh, audience who actually know um, uh, the answers to the questions that are being asked. So please put your answers in, because some of you are, are, um, are sound recordists or sound editors, or you've been making uh, work with sound. And if you know the answer, uh, please then chip that in, because we don't know everything and we can't necessarily cover all the questions in the workshop. So what we will do is that afterwards we're going to set up a forum which is on the Walk, Listen, Create website, uh, to which we'll answer all the questions. We'll transfer the questions from the chat, put them into the forum and then answer them and encourage you to join the forum and, and, and also uh, go through it there as well. So um, I, I'm not sure how many people we've got in the event who aren't uh, in Greenwich. So what I thought I'd start with is just to give you a sort of uh, heads up of where we are um, now, the, uh, uh, I'm not sure whether you can see the pointer or not, but the key thing uh, about Greenwich, which a lot of people um, a, a kind of misconception, is that this area here, um, which is where um, the university's new Stockwell campus building is, uh, and where the Royal Park is, and the and Maritime Museum, and, and approximately where my point is going is the Greenwich Meridian Line, going up like that is pretty much um, known to um, millions if not billions of people around the world and uh, since we had the Olympics in 2012 um, uh, uh, images were being thrust across the world of, of Greenwich Park and, and, and the, uh, basically where the University of Greenwich is um, and, and people kind of forget that actually the borough is much bigger than that um, and the borough stretches uh, quite a long way to the east, uh, to an area which is described as Thamesmead now. Uh, I'm not sure what it was in the past, but uh, uh, Abbey Wood is a much older uh, name and, and word, um, and um, parts of the borough um, is, is very key. It has some very historic pieces and uh, heritage sites. And um, along these uh, sections of green here and here, um, uh, it's ancient woodland, um, uh, which is remnant of ancient woodland, which has persisted for more than 400 years. So you can, you know, uh, get around both seeing countryside, um, suburban areas um, and historic places. Um, Greenwich also has the longest uh, borough boundary of any borough in London, which is um, uh, on the Thames. So uh, you, you'll see here, this is, you know, the Thames 
goes a nice long way around the peninsula and all the way down here and includes Deptford Creek. A lot of people don't realise they think Deptford's in the next door borough, but actually the Deptford Creek is in Greenwich. Uh, and so we actually have sort of like um, a third, if not, of the borough boundary is uh, a waterside and it's tidal. So we have this extraordinary uh, temperature business going on, which a lot of people don't realise is that when the tide changes, the temperature drops two to three degrees and um, or rises two to three degrees. So you have a, a really extraordinary kind of maritime feel about it. Um, and so what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and get you to uh, uh, submit something to something we're calling shorelines. So let me go on to the next slide if I can find my slide changer. Um, so what we're going to ask you to do is um, Shorelines is, is, is a, a project that we launched a couple of months ago and uh, what it encourages people to do, we hope, is to uh, write pieces, um, whether they're poems uh, or uh, short, very short stories of less than flash, what's called flash fiction or flash narrative or flash non-fiction. Uh, about shorelines, which could be um, rivers, uh, lakes, um, the, the sea or the ocean. And what we uh, hope to encourage is that people will uh, write these and submit them to shorelines and then read them out loud. And uh, what we're encouraging people to do is send them to their friends um, and encouraging their friends to read these out loud. And they can record them um, and uh, directly off the computer and enter them into the computer. So first of all, what we'd like you to do is to start writing some words. So uh, we'd like you to write words that um, evoke to you the shoreline, uh, which are either one, two or three syllable words. And we're doing this because we're actually going to get you to use these uh, later on in the workshop. So please don't uh, be bashful and go, well, I'm not sure I don't know where we're going to start. So, you know, uh, uh, you know, try to think of words about the shoreline, about the Thames, about the depth of creek. Uh, if you're a local resident or I notice there are a couple of people from the Isle of Dogs, uh, welcome from the other side of the river. Um, uh, you know, uh, put, some, put things in the chat uh, about um, uh, rivers or um, the shoreline or the foreshore. So, Think of uh, anything you like, and if you can add that to the chat. So, uh, uh, I don't know, we can have river mud. Um, what we're looking for is we're looking for uh, anything that sparks your uh, feeling about writing about the foreshore or the boundary of the river. And the purpose, as I say, is that we will uh, hopefully uh, get you to read some of this material when we come later in the uh, uh, in the in the in, in the workshop. So what I'm, while you're doing that, uh, I'm just going to show you shorelines, so you can just have a look and see what's going on. So it just takes a little bit to build this page, but um, it's really easy to submit uh, material, and uh, just to show you that you're you won't be alone um, uh, uh, in it, um, we, that we have got other um, pieces and things. So you can uh, come here and the page takes a little bit of time to load, but it, it's here. It only takes time to load because there are so many pieces. But I was going to show you um, hearing voices. Um, and this is a poem that was uh, written by someone and they contributed it to the site. Uh, if we go to the details, um, you'll see that it's um, here. You can read about who it was who submitted it. And they wrote it at the beginning of lockdown. Um, and they went for a walk on the foreshore. And um, uh, they sent it out and posted it to their friends. And one of their friends uh, decided to read it aloud and uh, she recorded it directly off the computer. So we have a, a, a setup that you can add your own recording, but just to show you all, so you can listen to this.
hearing voices. I step down to her pebbled edge, crouch on hunkers, look across her wideness, upstream and down. The Thames is quiet tonight. She so um, if you wanted to add a reading that, uh, to it, you could. You just fill up this form here and uh, you could record the audio immediately off the website and uh, just press the record button and off we go. So this is um, just something that we've set up that uh, to encourage people to think about uh, writing, writing stories that could be recorded um, and then reading aloud and sharing that during the lockdown, but also uh, to use this kind of material as a practice area almost uh, to uh, build narrative uh, to write a sound walk. Okay, so um, okay, so what we're basically going to um, want you to start thinking about uh, is um, when you make a sound wall, you've got to start thinking about your listener. Uh, you're not um, broadcasting this uh, to a, a huge number of people. You're actually sending it very much to an individual. Um, sometimes some people do listen to sound walks sitting at um, a computer and um, uh, at, at home, but most of the time uh, we're going to be trying to encourage people to listen to sound walks in situ or uh, outdoors. Um, and um, so you want to think about how and where they will hear their your story. And um, that's quite important because you've got to kind of think about when you're placing sounds or creating a sound walk, where and when will they be listening to it? Um, will it be on their commute, if anyone ever commutes again? But will it be on their commute? Uh, will it be on the dog walk? Uh, will it be on the daily walk for lockdown exercise? Um, where will might they be doing it? What, um, you know, will there be a construction noise going on or a railway line interfering in the background? Um, you've got to think about the safety of the listener. Uh, it's very easy to get so immersed in a sound walk that uh, you forget about where you are and you don't take much attention about uh, what's going on around you. And uh, you don't want people to, you know, uh, cross the railway line or, um, you know, uh, trip over and fall in the Thames. So you've got to kind of think about um, the safety issues as well as um, uh, you, you know, making a exciting and interesting and intriguing immersive experience. And you've got to think about the clash of sounds. You've got, got to think about dissonance and whether there are certain um, sounds that uh, you've recorded that are actually uh, really painful to listen to, or whether you slip from one sound to another sound uh, uh, in your recording and you uh, forget about the level. So you go from some they're listening to something which is they can hardly hear and then <laughs> suddenly they're shocked by something that's very loud so you, you know, you've got to kind of think about that very closely because when you come to wearing headphones it's a very different experience um, to listening uh, without headphones and you've also got to think about um, kind of key things about um, whether they can actually download this kind of stuff because a lot of people try streaming and of course the mobile receptions aren't great so you need to have a, a mechanism by which uh, or use a platform by which they can download the sound and yet it continue to be gps located if it's a geolocated sound and uh, there's something called wi-fi shadow out there many of you may have encountered it without knowing it's there but it's uh, when certain buildings or whatever block the block the sound and what you'll find is the um, at certain areas of London are, 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 are notorious for this uh, I've not checked out the Woolwich Arsenal area but it's usually military encampments uh, that will have Wi-Fi shadow um, so uh, just be aware uh, uh, along the Euston Road they have um, uh, a terrorist defense mechanism fence there and there's Wi-Fi shadow in areas along the Euston Road um, but also uh, around Parliament Square, there are def uh, Wi-Fi shadow defence mechanisms to stop you uh, getting GPS access. And that may be the case uh, in the Woolwich Arsenal area. I'm not sure, but if you're making a sound walk in Woolwich, uh, just be warned that, that that might happen. And we'll, oops, 
I beg your pardon, I'm now rushing away, slide eight, which is way beyond where I'm meant to be. Uh, we're going to talk about some sound walks um, uh, shortly, um, uh, but uh, just to give you a couple of examples, or at least point you in the right direction, I've been talking about this site, walklistencreate.org. We will send you, after the workshop, uh, an email which will include all the links that we talk about, and that we really encourage you to sign up to Walk, Listen, Create. Um, Walk, Listen, Create is a platform that we created uh, sort of the end of December last year and the beginning this year. Um, we've now got about 800 people on the site who register on the site who are submitting work to it. These are all people who are interested in sound walks. Um, you'll find that we have an archive of about 350 what we call walking pieces, some of which are um, listening walks, some are geolocated walks. Um, it's a free platform for you to use to uh, publicize your work. And um, what we're going to encourage you to look at specifically is that each year we have something called Soundwalk September and we have an awards uh, um, system there and we have a short list of 13 um, uh, uh, walking pieces that have been shortlisted for the awards. We'd really recommend you have a look at those 13 to begin with uh, and then maybe explore further. So we'll just move on to the next slide if I can find my slide changer. Okay, uh, Martin, I'm going to hand over to you on uh, recording on your smartphone. Okay, thank you, Andrew. Uh, yes, uh, the, you know, ideally for the purpose of uh, mm, uh, mm, for geolocative sound works, ideally you would use a, a professional recorder in which you can have a, a very detailed, very nice sound, but obviously not, not all of us uh, have access to this kind of device. And luckily smartphones uh, have pretty decent uh, microphones built in, uh, in, into the device by means of which many, many big corporations, as far as I know, are listening to us. But we can also use those uh, things to record whatever we want to present during, during a sound work. Uh, so using your smartphone in the most basic way uh, starts with finding an app that uh, allows for recording sound. Uh, I'm, I am uh, I'm an Android user and most of the Android devices have something that is called a voice recorder. It may differ between a, a, a brand to brand, between uh, different types of uh, devices. But there's usually a red circle button or an icon that you can use and start recording your voice. Uh, I'm not much familiar with iPhones. Andrew, I know you are using those. How is it called on iPhone? Yeah, I'm, I'm an iPhone user and um, I, uh, it comes bundled with something called voice memo. Um, so you'll find that in your utilities section amongst the apps, or if you're lazy like I am, I switch on Siri and say, uh, please open voice memo, and it does just that for us, which is great. Um, and that's what we want you to do. So reach for your smartphone now. That's what we're wanting. <laughs> Sorry, back to you, Martin. Yes, so, so once you have your device, uh in front of you and once you have located your app for recording uh, an app for recording audio uh, you have to uh, first consider what do you actually want to record and what is your environment uh, at the moment of recording because uh, microphones cannot be focused on any particular sound you have to record and they are recording pretty much everything that you can hear uh, around you. So if, if you're in a noisy location or if, I don't know, there's, there's a window open next to you and there are some sounds of the city coming in through the window, please try to shut the window or try to change your location before you start recording. Uh, then you have to remember that once you press the button, the record button, everything will start recording immediate, immediately. So if you want to avoid longer silence in the beginning, or uh, um, or any unwanted sounds, just make sure to find your moment precisely then when you want to start recording. But once you start speaking to, you, to your microphone, there's an issue of uh, usual human body sounds, such as your breath, such as uh, the sounds that we make by, I don't know, uh, touching the table or 
creaking chairs that you sit on, and all these kind of things. So be aware of those, be aware that they will be recorded, try to avoid them because uh, without them, the uh, clarity of recording is much better and it's easier for your audience to listen to, to what you have recorded. Try to control your voice too, because uh, as you can hear in my own speech at the moment, you know, the, the voice likes to break or uh, sometimes you forget what word to say, or if you're speaking in a foreign language, you can forget a word or two, you know, there are plenty of circumstances that you need to, uh, to, to, to be uh, cautious of. Okay, I think the idea for, for this exercise now uh, is to um, record what you have uh, entered into the uh, chat window and uh, do record them for yourselves. Uh, mute, mute, uh, press mute on Zoom and try a couple of times, really, maybe three, maybe four times uh, to record the, the, those little tiny rhymes that you have entered into, into the chat window. We are not going to use them. This is only for, for your own uh, exercise so that you can see how it works, how your voice does record on, on the device. Play them back as soon as you, uh, as you, as you've listened to them, as, uh, as soon as you recorded them, and decide what could you do better. And just as it says in the presentation, it's much, much uh, better to use your headphones to hear the voice uh, in, in more clear, clearly than from those tiny speakers in your device. And soon after that, I'm going to show you how to actually edit the sound uh, with the use of a uh, uh, open source software that you can install on your computer and change things that uh, unavoidably have recorded into your recording. Uh, yeah, if I chip in here, um, uh, if you're not short of anything to <laughs> read, what we were suggesting was that you would try to read something out loud which was written in the chat. So uh, if you just want to grab something, try it for a minute, record something, um, and then listen back to it and delete it because we're not going to ask you to play it uh, to us all. Don't worry, that's not our intention. Um, and um, obviously when you're doing this kind of thing um, uh, and you're, you might be making recordings outside, you, you do need to kind of uh, think about the wind, uh, which is um, a real uh, a nuisance because it makes an awful white noise across your microphone. So you'll find that some people will have uh, very ex uh, exciting sort of mufflers, but you could actually use an old sock uh, over your smartphone if you wanted to, to reduce the sound over the, the wind noise over the microphone. Uh, but otherwise, uh, one of the tricks of the trade is actually walk backwards with, uh, you know, so the um, um, microphone is held in, the wind is hitting your back. Uh, so a trick to the trade like that. Um, you'll find that when you're recording something, it's always handy to uh, have an earphone, one, one headphone, uh, uh, listening to what you're listening to through uh, what's being recorded on the mic. As um, the microphones are incredibly um, good at picking up uh, sounds. And of course, they're actually uh, not filtering it like your brain does. So um, you have actually uh, sounds which are perhaps, uh, uh, you know, come over very much more loudly than you're actually hearing normally. Um, and you just need to be aware of things like passing fountains or running streams of water because um, they don't, uh, microphones don't pick those sounds up very well at all. And you end up with uh, something that sounds a bit like white noise. And in more, you know, if you get more and more sophisticated, you can get microphones that are specific for a particular types of sounds. Uh, but, you know, we're teaching you how to do something with a smartphone. You just need to find out ways of um, uh, making things as best you can with a smartphone. Now, with a recorder, you can check the sound levels. And many recorders will have a standby button where you can kind of re rehearse what you're doing and check the levels. Um, but uh, uh, the smartphone doesn't usually have that. So um, the only way you'll be able to get a better sound quality is moving the microphone to the source of the sound. Um, the, the trick to remember when you're making a recording of someone's voice, including your own, is um, that you don't want to pick up the sound of their heartbeat or their breath heavily. Now, part of the problem is we do make that sort of spitting or 
noise when we're talking and some of us might have a bit of a lisp although we don't like to admit that um, or uh, you know we get a, and we're clicking on our teeth and you want to try and reduce that as much as possible and you also don't want to get the sound of their heartbeat so what we do is we take the um, uh, the thumb and little finger and take that from the um, uh, just sort of just below the mouth down uh, and press that on your sternum and that's basically the best point on which to have the microphone um, so if you are going to use a kind of lapel microphone and if you did want to kind of record people and interview people uh, you can get really cheap uh, really easy microphones um, for uh, 15 quid or something like that I'm just reaching for one now um, so uh, you know, we uh, th this is a two meter microphone that runs off your headphone socket um, uh, into your, you know a sort of two meter length um, of of wire, so uh, you could use it for video as well. Um, and um, uh, you know, it's fifteen quid off the internet, so they're not they're not expensive. Um, okay, so we'll move on. Um, I think the um, other things that you kind of got to remember about um, making recordings is um, that uh, and people don't necessarily know this when they begin is that uh, you can actually add lots and lots of different layers. So you can actually have, um, you know, a voice uh, running and you can have a soundscape running and you can have uh, music uh, embedded in there and you could have uh, voices on different uh, tracks and things like that so you can have lots and lots of different tracks but what you've got to make sure of is that um, they they flow into each other and they they, they don't um, cross over and, and you lose voice because you've got another sound on a different track I mean it sounds blatantly obvious but I can assure you it's frequently done as a mistake um, ambience, you can get loads and loads of ambience uh, royalty free um, and uh, you can get special effects and you can get m music royalty free. Uh, the British Library has a, a sound archive and um, uh, they often um, uh, publish details of sounds that you can use which are royalty free. Um, and YouTube, there's um, uh, quite a lot that you can do. Uh, but I really, really do insist and, uh, you know, and, and, and want to sort of say, please do not rip off someone else's um, music. Because now we're in the age of digital, it's incredibly easy to rip off um, uh, other people's music and other people's soundscape compositions. But what you need to remember is, it's a bit like when you're at university and they know whether you're plagiarizing someone else's essay. Um, because it's all digital, it's actually very easy to identify um, uh, someone who has uh, ripped off music uh, because the um, waveform, the digital waveform, um, you, you know, is uh, very easy to, uh, to check. And um, I'll just give you a, a quick example. Uh, I know a soundscape recorder uh, who recorded a blackbird um, and uh, unbeknownst to the uh, record producer who ripped it off, they didn't know that every blackbird has a, a unique song. So a blackbird, every single blackbird has a unique song. So therefore, because it has a unique song, you have a unique waveform and therefore it was easy for the sound recordist to discover that the record producer had ripped off his recording. Uh, he has recordist rights. Um, poor old Blackbird doesn't have many rights, but the recordist has the rights um, to the recording. Uh, the, there was a, a, a settlement, out of court settlement, because they went, to, uh, they were threatened to go to court with it. There was an out of court settlement. This is a, uh, you know, if I named the pop star, which I won't, um, you'll be really surprised actually. And um, but uh, that that is actually the case that they settled out of court on a recording of a Blackbird song. So please do not infringe copyright and steal other people's music. Please make your own. Okay, so um, Martin, it's over to you. Yes, uh, let's, uh, let's discuss a little bit uh, uh, sound editing of the recordings you make. 
Um, I can I can imagine that some of you uh, are advanced or have some experience with uh, audio editing softwares. So um, this presentation here, this workshop today, is about the very basics. So if, if there are any more uh, advanced questions, we, we can try to answer them. So please enter them in the chat. Mm, but uh, for, for the purpose of this, uh, this workshop, it will be the, the most basic uh, presentation you can ever imagine. Uh, I'll share my screen with the, with a software called Audacity, which is a free and open source uh, uh, audio editor available for you for your computers, both on actually on all, I think, all systems at the moment, Linux, uh, Windows, and uh, OS. Uh, how do I share the screen uh, like this? Uh, Andrew, I, I think you have to stop to stop sharing your screen because I cannot stop uh, sharing my... Bigger pardon me, yeah, okay. I'm probably uh, uh, stopping you, I beg your pardon. That's okay, thank you. Okay, so this is, can everyone see it? Oh. Yes, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Okay, great. So this is the basic panel of the Audacity software. You can, you can Google it, and it's a, it's a free download, and it's super easy to install on your devices, on your computers, so, so you can do it uh, even now or soon after the, the workshop ends. What you have here is the, the main screen in which your files, audio files, will be visible in the a, in a, in a form of waveforms. I'll show you one in a second. And then you have some very basic tools and features and effects actually that you can use to process your audio so it's uh, more suitable for your, for your sound works. Uh, you can insert your um, audio file by basically opening the file from the file menu. And you can choose the sound that you would like to use from here. Or you can drag and drop it from a different uh, from a different software, from, from file manager or your audio uh, audio player. Uh, I was intending to to use something else for today, but actually, uh, Andrew, just before we started this conversation, conversation reminded me of a, of an audio I've been using in the past workshops. And I think it might be a better idea to use this uh, this other audio. Uh, this audio that you are seeing here is a little bit of. A, little fragment of, uh, of an old cassette tape with a recording of Polish English language course. And I, I will play a little bit to you so that you can hear what it sounds like and what we can afterwards do, do with it. So you basically pr press the play button and it should play in your, uh, in, uh, in your headphones now too. Północ, midnight. Południe, midday, noon. Dzisiaj, today. Wczoraj, yesterday. Przedwczoraj, the day before yesterday. Jutro, tomorrow. And so on and so on and so on. What you, what you see here is the waveform of the audio file. So it, it's, it's a representation of your audio uh, on a time scale. All those peaks and lows are um, the places in which the audio is higher or, or more quiet. Um, there are two waveforms because they represent two channels, left and right. So, so left is what you hear in your left, left, left hand ear, and uh, this one is in your right ear. Uh, you can zoom in and zoom out to see more details by using those icons here. And basically, the things that you would probably most need to do when you're doing a very basic sound work would be to cut those fragments of the, of the recording that you, want, uh, that, that you want in your sound work. Um, what you need to do to remove some portion of this, uh, of this recording is to just highlight it or select it like this. You can select whichever part of the recording. Let's just remove the uh, the beginning portion of the sound, and press the delete button from your uh, keyboard. It just disappears. So the sound starts now with the, with the, with the, with the language course without the signal at the beginning. Północ, midnight. Południe, midday. And so on. 
Let's say you want no more than 15 seconds of it. So you can also remove the selection at the end of the recording. Exactly the same methods. When you listen to it now, Północ, midnight. Południe, midday, noon. Dzisiaj, today. Wczoraj, yesterday. You may decide that it's actually too quiet or too loud for what you need, for, for what you need in your, in your sound work. Uh, you need to go to the effects option here, up here, and choose amplify feature or amplify tool. It will show you uh, this, uh, this glider, uh, which allows you for making it more, or more loud or more quiet, depending on what you need. If the amplification goes beyond, uh, below zero, it's getting quiet, and above zero, it's, it's louder. You have to be very careful with this, because if you go with too much amplification, uh, the sound may be very distorted. I will show you an example how it can sound like if you go too, too far with, uh, with this glider. Um, Audacity does not allow it by default. You have to press this button here, uh, check this option to actually allow for distortion. But anyway, be careful with this. Be careful. Now I'll, I will play, play the distorted sound to you, something that you really don't want in your, uh, in your audio. Północ, midnight, południe, midday, and so on. You don't really want this kind of sound, so, so you have to be very careful not to go with, with those peaks uh, above, uh, above the limits. You can undo amplify, and amplify it uh, a little bit less than I did. Let's say, just under five decibels should be enough. Północ, midnight. Uh, but as you can notice, uh, the very beginning, this portion here, starts, starts very abruptly and it's quite noisy. Uh, we can use fade in and fade out tools to make it more smooth. Here you have it in for the beginning of the recording and then the recording would start like this Północ. as you can hear it's more more subtle and more pleasant to listen to and the same here for for the end of your recording with fade out yesterday such way you don't have those very abrupt abrupt changes of sounds when when, when the sounds are put together or played uh, one after another so these are the most basic things you, you need uh, from an audio editor. Once you've done with this, you can export the sound as MP3, as WAV, OGG, or whatever other format you, 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 you need. Uh, for, the, uh, for, for, for the geolocative app uh, we are going to use later on in this uh, workshop, uh, the format that we want to use is M4A or AAC. And we will, let me, let me save it here. Uh, be careful with the quality. The, the, the higher number in this quality, uh, quality uh, option here is the better the, the quality of the recording basically is. So be always careful with choosing the best possible option. I'll just save it now and we will use it for the future uh, part of the next part of the workshop. Um, Andrew, I think that's it. Okay, I'll take back uh, the screen, shall I? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, no, I think you have to, I think because I'm, it, it's the other Andrew who's hosting this, so I think. Yes, yes, I just stopped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You have to stop and I have to start. Okay, no problem. Um, 
Okay, so uh, just a couple of tricks that uh, Martin didn't uh, mention, but uh, worth knowing about is um, uh, when, when you've recorded something and you're going to start editing it, it's always a good idea to duplicate the track um, so that you uh, edit the top uh, track and you've always got the original at the bottom. Um, the reason for that is, is the render mistake and you go, oh, uh, I shouldn't have done that and you can't retrieve it, uh, then at least you've still got the original there. But it's also helpful because it'll have the timings. So um, quite often when you when, when you record something, you know, even if it's an interview, you'll find that uh, there'll be a, a huge long periods of uh, when someone goes off on a ramble and uh, there's absolutely of no interest to what your listeners want. And uh, you might want to get rid of lots of that. Um, and so the, it's important to, to, to listen through to what you've recorded. Now, uh, I'll, take you, I'll give you an example that the geolocated soundwalk that I've created uh, is over three and a half miles. And, um, you know, I recorded that and that was a heck of a long time. But uh, from it, I only took uh, about four minutes of recording. So, um, uh, it, you, you know, I chucked out everything else. Everything else didn't fit what I wanted to make happen or, or whatever. So I got rid of it. Um, and one of the tricks of the trade is to, uh, once you've listened through it, make a note of the timings of the spaces where you want to keep something and just literally get rid of everything else. Um, and the quickest way, you know, if you're up against a deadline, the quickest way of doing this is to start at the end of the recording and not at the beginning, because if you start at the beginning of the recording, then the times all change. Yeah, so it's it's kind of like uh, slightly really annoying, isn't it? <laughs> and it goes and it can go awry. So don't let that happen. Um, okay, so uh, what we're trying to encourage you to do is we're going, we're we're running a fourteen day challenge, and the fourteen day challenge is we want you to make a sound walk. Um, it doesn't have to be geolocated. Uh, but we want you to have fun, get out there, uh, even during lockdown, uh, even walking around your, uh, uh, your house, your home, your flat, uh, wherever you are, create a sound walk, doesn't matter if it's indoors or outdoors, but have fun creating a sound walk and trying it out. And then we want you to submit it to Walk, Listen, Create. Now, as I mentioned quickly, Walk, Listen, Create was put together by three of us um, at the beginning of the year um, because we wanted to try to encourage a community of sound walk makers to come together and it's been really fabulous is that it you know lockdown has actually helped us because people have suddenly want to come online find about what they can do and you can make sound walks on your own you don't you know you don't have to have a whole group of people to do it you can do it on your own and uh, it's really you know, all the technology you need in your hand um, so you can you can get out and and get out and do it and it's so it's been a great lockdown exercise and we've had lots of people getting involved and as I say we have now a community of eight, over 800 people from around the world so we'd love you to uh, to go to walk this and create uh, and sign up it's completely free uh, you can add any sound walks there but for the 14 day challenge we just want you to tag them Greenwich sounds you'll find it in the tag list Greenwich Sounds. Uh, this is the Walk, Listen, Create website. Uh, you can click through and look at the uh, shortlisted award winners here. And there are some great examples from around the world. Uh, if we just click through and have a look, uh, and we can see uh, that our advisory board includes uh, the creator of the Echoes app, Josh Kopacek, but also Duncan Speakman um, and Francesca Panetta uh, and Hamish Shule from Australia, all of whom have got years and years of experience of making sound walks. And they're the judges and they have to make uh, their choice from these different uh, sound walks. And um, Sandbox uh, from Slovenia is built on the Echoes app. I know that for a fact. So there's a chance to have a look there. And then if you want to include your own work, which is what we want you to do, we want you to upload work that you've created uh, into onto the uh, Walk, Listen, Create site. Uh, you just come to include your work and uh, there are details here about how you register uh, and you register is completely free. Uh, you join up and uh, you can uh, submit your um, uh, walking piece through this submission piece form here. And uh, it gathers, you put down all the information about it 
um, whether it's uh, recorded binaurally um, uh, using uh, uh, um, binaural mics, uh, whether it's downloadable, geolocated, all sorts of things like that. Uh, there's an issue about copyright that you have to sign up to, make sure that you're happy about the copyright. And uh, it's really simple. So, um, and if you want to look and sort through some of the walking pieces beyond uh, the shortlisted ones, uh, as I mentioned, there's about 350 on our archive, but uh, pages and buildings, so maybe we won't look at that. Oh, yes, it's just come through, and you can see them all on a map. Um, so uh, I hope you can, anyway. It might uh, not build so quickly, so maybe oh, yeah, it's coming in. Um, so you'll see where they all are. Um, and uh, we'd like a few from Africa, <laughs> but we're also very happy to have them from Greenwich. So part of your 14 day challenge, please, is uh, populate the map for, uh, for Greenwich as well. I'll just quickly take you to uh, a piece that I put up yesterday. I, this is the one that I made. Um, high low. So what I've done is I've mischievously taken you from the highest point in Greenwich, uh, which if anyone is from Greenwich, it's quite a challenge to know where it is. You know it's going to be somewhere up on Shooter's Hill, up on the Chalk Ridge. It's actually Eagles Field Recreation Ground, which is at uh, the giddy height of 433 feet. And I walk you to what I think could be the lowest point, but I bet you there'll be someone who'll point out there's somewhere lower. Uh, I take you to the junction of Luffield Road and Felixstowe Road in Abbey Wood, uh, which is at naught sea level. So it's at sea level, um, which is kind of interesting if you think about it, because the River Thames is above them. Yeah. So you start to think about it. You're below the river in Abbey Wood in certain sections. Uh, so it's a bit like, you know, a touch and go down there. Uh, so I take you on that walk and uh, you can, um, once you get up there and you'll see what you can do, you can set a featured video, uh, image, uh, add audio, uh, manage your images, change the stuff, uh, and all the information is here. And um, people can then come to this and um, uh, download it and it's uh, on the Echoes app. And we're about to demonstrate the Echoes app to you. So uh, I'll just get out of this with Spotify and everybody else. You can make your own playlists and God knows what else. There's everything on SoundCloud. It's, it's uh, very easy to, uh, to use. Um, you can try it free for 30 days, but actually you can try it for a lot longer if you uh, um, uh, keep to their freemium level and uh, you can upload your own sound. And we'd really recommend there are other... Uh, platforms out there for sounds like Mixcloud and things like that but uh, to be honest SoundCloud has been uh, the most reliable for us. There were rumours last year that um, it, it was underfinanced and it was going to uh, fall over or disappear but that it's now been reinvigorated with extra finance so uh, you don't need to worry about that um, but it's a great uh, resource to use. And of course, what it allows you to do is to um, put things up there and, and, and keep them private or uh, publish them and make them public and share them. And of course, that's you know the whole idea, isn't it, is that we're meant to be sharing. So, um, OK, so I'm uh, going to hand back to uh, Martin um, because we're going to be talking about the Echoes app. Um, so, Martin, are you ready? If I stop sharing... Sure, sure, absolutely. Yeah, okay, I'll stop sharing. Back to you. Okay, um, I start with, uh, with, out, uh, with coming back to Audacity again, because there, there, there are some questions in the chat that uh, actually you are right, I didn't cover. Oh, probably you can, you, probably you, can uh, you can find uh, all this information uh, on, on YouTube. And, uh, and the software is really, really basic, and it's very easy to use once you start playing around with it. You will very quickly learn how to do it. But yes, one of the questions that actually might be very useful for you is to how to actually mix two tracks together, uh, with, uh, like layering voice over, over music or a different way around. And uh, just, just to show you how, how simple and basic it is, once you have your first track open, you can add another one. It opens in a different window. This will be a 
that song. Well, this, uh, this is a different, different animal sound, but okay, let's use it just as an example. Uh, what you need to do is to co copy the sound by using Control C option or Edit Copy. Go back to your previous window. Add new stereo track and paste the information, the copied information into this new track. Ah, my computer is freezing at the moment, but normally it's it's a very basic process. So yes, here it goes. And over here, up at the top. You have tools for moving things around. Uh, at the moment, this icon is a selection tool, so you can only select a piece of audio. But if you want to move it, you press this button and move the sound to the location where you want it to be. So now, if you start the playback, you will hear two sounds playing together. Północ, midnight, południe. Midday. And then again, you just export it and save as an MP3 or whatever other uh, format you need it in. You can also uh, basically, basically drag and drop the file from another software or from your file manager, which is sometimes even uh, faster and easier way of doing it. But again, uh, Start playing around uh, yourself. Uh, okay, but uh, let, let's go to um, let's go to to the software that we are going to uh, present here, which is Echoes. Uh, Echoes is a Echoes is a geolocative media app. Uh, software prepared for creating sound works with the use of the mobile app. As we discussed earlier, the idea of geolocative uh, media apps is based on the idea that uh, your devices actually know precisely where exactly you are at any given moment. Uh, in the most precise version of this, uh, of this feature, they use uh, GPS satellite system to, to locate you with a uh, accuracy of couple of meters really in good conditions even less than that. Uh, so uh, using this uh, we can prepare a map of actual space and put sounds in exactly those spaces in those uh, places within this area where we want them to be played. Next step is uh, to have our user installing the our audience installing the app on their, de on their device and start walking in this area. Their device, being a smartphone or a tablet, uh, will know where GPS, where, where the audience is, and will play exactly those sounds that we want them to hear in a, in a very specific places. Uh, there were some questions earlier if, uh, if we can um, decide on the height of the place or time of day. This is called a 3D, 3D geolocative sound, and uh, at the moment, uh, Echoes are developing this feature, so it's in a better stage as far as I know. Uh, you would need to discuss this in more detail with the, with the creator of this app. Uh, you can find their contact details on their website. The website is Echoes XYZ. Um, there are several tools similar to Echoes. Um, available on the internet. We are using Echoes and I've been using Echoes in my own practice for, for a number of years. Uh, and it seems to be the most reliable and most, uh, well, even, even the most nicely looking one uh, out of those that I have tried. But you can, you can do your own research, uh, try to, to find other ones. I'm not really affiliated with, 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 uh, with Echoes or any other, other company. I'm just using it and I'm happy to, to show you how it, how it works. It's not perfect, it has, it has its imperfections, uh, but uh, overall it, it was the best experience out of all I've been, uh, I've been working with. Um, 
what it gives to you is, is a number of absolutely wonderful possibilities uh, that you, you can use this for. Uh, I'll show you how it works on a, on a very specific example of, 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 of a piece uh, that I was working on recently. But uh, the most recent one that I've been using Echoes for was, uh, was my band's uh, virtual tour because, you know, there's a pandemic, we cannot play real concerts. So we've been using this, this app to play, uh, play our music in a very specific places uh, all around Poland. So, and we, we're even thinking about, you know, going for a world tour at the moment, because, you know, with this app, nothing can prevent us from playing, playing Wembley, for example, at any time that we want. So, so you know, if, if you open your minds, and, you know, there's plenty of things that you can do with it, and only your imagination is, the, is something that can stop you. Uh, to use this uh, app, you have to go to creator uh, website and it will ask you to log in. Obviously, first you will need to register and then log in with your passport and email address. <clears throat> I've been using my, my old uh, uh, password to show you the, uh, the project I've been working on in September this year. Uh, the, the project I've been working on in September, I'll show you very briefly, is uh, it's a rendition of a work by, an, by a Lithuanian artist called Indra Liskauskaita. She's a young artist from Vilnius, and what, what she's done is uh, uh, something that is called Red Data Book, New, Rare, and Endangered, endangered Animal Species. What she did is she's taken the list of uh, endangered animal species uh, from Lithuania and uh, reworked it a little bit so that uh, in many cases she created some fictional, uh, non-existent non uh, species. Uh, she prepared very nice and very uh, detailed descriptions of behaviors and uh, other features of those animals and is being presented as a book. But also she has asked her audience to record the sounds, imaginary sounds of those fictional animals. People have uh, recorded those and normally in, in a gallery space, you would be having a book that you can read through and the sounds would be coming all around uh, in, from the speakers placed in the gallery. But since we cannot do it in a, in a gallery anymore, uh, at least for now, uh, Indra decided that she, she would be happy to use echoes to put those animals into actual into the actual real forests. The people who want to listen to those animals can use echoes to walk around the forest and once in a while hear the sounds of fictional animals um, uh, in, in, in the forest so, so that the, those sounds mix with the, uh, with the real, real nature sounds. This, called, uh, this project is called Red Data Book and it's been uh, uh, done in the city in northern Poland called Elbląg. Uh, by pressing this edit button here, uh, I'll show you how, how the walk that we did looks like. It will take a second to load, give us some time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what we have here is uh, the cover image for, for the walk. This is something that will dis display uh, in the mobile app of the of the audience. Then you have a title and a description of the book. So you can enter whatever info you want and it will be, dis it will be displayed to your, to your audience before they start walking. And just below it, here's a very, very important uh, thing, which is a published status of, of the walk. This one is public because it's finished and, uh, and you can walk it, but you can also save it as a draft, which is invisible to anyone and private, which is visible only to you as a creator after you log in with, within the app. So this, this is something that you can use for, for testing your work before you make it public. Uh, here is, uh, there's also information about the creator, uh, which is less important. And here in the middle panel, you have the list of sounds that you have used for the, for the work. As you can see, these are fictional uh, Latin names of, of animals. It's quite a lot. We'll come back to this panel in a, in a second. Uh, and here on the on the right hand side, you have a panel with a map. 
you can ch change the map from dark to, uh, to satellite, where you can see where exactly you are, or a hybrid, which shows hybrid works much better in, in cities. Uh, each blue area here is, is one sound. You, you can place your sound as circles, which has its advantages, which I'll show, show you to you later, or in whatever actual, actual shape you want them to be in, like this. For circles, you use this round button here. For other uh, polygons or other areas, you use this this tool over here. I'll be showing you in practice how this works, like when we start uh, wor uh, working on a, on a test work. This is only a presentation of what you actually have within the creator panel. Each sound can be edited. Once you click on the edit uh, button, uh, you will have a zoom into the sound on the map, where exactly it is. This is the sound that we are working with at the moment. Each sound has its own title and description, which is also visible to the users if you, if you want the users to be, uh, to be seeing it. You have, a preview, uh, you have a preview of the sound. You can play the sound here. Yeah, this is a very tiny animal that we've put into the, to this part of the forest. And you have several options that your users, uh, that you can use to, 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 to decide on how the sound is being played uh, to your audience. So option one is play loop, which means obviously that uh, the, the sound will be played to your listeners just as long as they are within this area and the, the sound will play on loop. So it will repeat, uh, as soon as it ends, it will repeat again, it will start again, it will repeat as, lo as long as you're in this area. When you walk out from it, it will stop. Uh, but you can also choose uh, play once option, which means that the sound will play once and will never play again within the same walk, even if the user will come back to the same area. So only the first time you enter this area, the, the, the sound will, will be played. Otherwise, it's completely inaudible to, 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 to your users. Play complete means that um, uh, the sound is being played from the beginning till the end, no matter where the user is. So, so your user, your audience, enters the area, the sound starts playing, the audience walks out from the area, but the sound continues to the, to the end of the recording. And uh, this option specialization here uh, allows for making the sound uh, fade in and out when you enter the area. So it's more quiet at the edges of the area, and it's louder when you go to the center of the area. This only works with the, with the circle, circular uh, echoes. Uh, those echoes in this shape like this, this map, map of shapes, uh, will be visible to your users in the app. So when they open the app, they pretty much know where to go, uh, where the zones are, where the echoes are, uh, how, how to move around to to listen to them. But you want to make some surprises. Uh, sometimes it happens that you want to make some surprises to your audience. And you can use this button hide zone in order to actually not display this, uh, this shape on the map. In such way, uh, your audience may be walking around and completely unexpectedly listen to something that you have prepared for them, which works quite nicely. Uh, I recommend this feature a lot. And hide player means, because within the app, you have a player that you can actually play the sound from the app by just pressing the play button. You can switch this option off by hiding the player. As you can see, those layers, they overlap each other, which is the, the most wonderful feature of those sound looking apps. So what I was showing to you in Audacity, layering two sounds over each other can be done within one file, but you can also have, have it done here. Imagine that your ambience, your ambient music or field recording, or whatever it is, is this shape uh, around here. 
right? That this is your ambience. But uh, your audience walks in, is walking along this path here, and at a certain moment they reach to the place where the other sound is put on. Let's say this is a voice recording. Uh, so both sounds can play together simultaneously and you can start mixing, uh, mixing recordings uh, by just layering them on top of each other. So these are the, the basic features of, of Echoes. This is, uh, this is what you have available uh, within the creator. I will show you how to start your own work. Uh, in, and in order to do so, you have to go to option called My Collections over here. This is the this is that screen you, you've seen in the very beginning after logging into your uh, account in, in Echoes. And to start a new one, you press this plus button over here. It says create new collection. First, you, first thing you need to do is to give it a title. Let's call it Greenwich Fest. Okay. And then you have to jump to place or find the place on the map where you want your work to be to be started. Let's start with Greenwich. Obviously, I, uh, I made a spelling mistake here to show that you can easily edit your title afterwards to When you're on the map, you can obviously zoom in and out from the from the map. Let's focus on Village Park because probably this is the easiest way to work with at the moment. Let's make it a satellite view. And let's, let's place the sound that we have created earlier on, uh, on the map. When you decide, when you have decided where you want this uh, sound to be placed in, press on this button over here and start creating your, uh, your echo, your, your zone in which the sound will be created. It shows, shows you the radius of the, of, the, of the echo. And after you've created it, you can drag it around so you can change the location easily and change the size also quite easily. Let's place it over here. You can give it a title. You can enter whatever description you want to be displayed to your, uh, to your audience. And once you've done that, you can create the element. Over here, you have a upload new sound button that you have to press click to have the sound uploaded. Obviously, what you need to do is to uh, send your sounds to the, to the Echo servers. This is the sound that we've been working on. It's in M4A, M4A format. And once you open it, you will see this tiny pop-up here that shows the process of uploading. You can double check if it's been uploaded. Północ, midnight, południe. Yes, it was. And now you decide whether you want it on loop, do you want it to be played only once, to be played com complete, or if you want to use this option. Let's say we want it on a loop. And we want to keep it this. this. Once done, you just press the save, save the element button, and this one too, and it is being saved. When you go back to the list of sounds, you have this green green test sound one on your list. When you, when you want to make a different sh shape of, for the sound, you just use this option and start drawing your polygonal shape for the sound that you want to, to be using. 
Once you're done with that, you can obviously change the shape in whichever direction. You can move the shape. Ah, you cannot move the shape, but you can move it by dragging it over here. You can only move circles. So in, in this way, you have those two sounds overlapping. When you save it, when you hit save and go back, you have those two sounds on the list. And then you can save the whole walk. At the moment, this walk is invisible to anyone. But if you change the published status from draft to public, it will be available to anyone who has echoes and is walking in the Greenwich Park at the moment. So basically, that's it. In, that, that, that's how it works. And I'm happy to answer all your questions, but this, these are the basic, uh, basic features of the, of the work. Andrew, I, I think it's, I'll, I'll hand it back to you now. Oh, Marcin, just very quickly, uh, Tamsin just asked, how do you delete uh, sound? Uh, oh, yeah, sure, of course. Uh, you have this uh, menu option here, and it says delete echo. It just disappears. Um, okay, well, um, there have been some great questions in the uh, in the chat, and I've been trying to answer some of them while Martin's been speaking. But as I say, what we'll do is we'll take all the questions from the chat and all the answers and put them in the Walk, Listen, Create forum that we'll be creating uh, for this workshop immediately after the workshop. Give me an hour and I'll, you know, get it all sorted. Um, uh, so, uh, but one of the questions that someone asked was about IPR, uh, about um, intellectual property right. Uh, what, what you've got to understand is all these things are tools. Uh, you as the creator hold the IPR, but if you're unsure about it, please just contact um, whatever the platform is that you're, you're choosing to use. Echoes is, um, was created from a, a research laboratory at Manchester University, as was another one, which is a fantastic one to look at, which is Sonic Maps. Um, and uh, Josh Kopacek uh, did his PhD about geolocative uh, sound. Um, and, and Josh is uh, Im immensely um, helpful and he's invested, you know, basically half his life into Echoes. Uh, so he's um, uh, very keen to uh, encourage people to, uh, to use the app. So uh, my recommendation is you contact Josh directly just to uh, uh, make sure that you feel comfortable about uh, what happens to the IPR. Uh, similarly with Walk, Listen, Create, we, we don't, uh, you know, it's just a platform. Um, uh, it's, it's, we're, we're not claiming any claim to uh, your content whatsoever. Uh, what we do say, though, is that you will be posting your content under a Commons license. Um, the, um, I can't quote the Commons license off the top of my head, but uh, all the details is on the Walk, Listen, Create side. Um, so as I say, after this event, you'll be sent an email which will have uh, the links in it that we've talked about uh, here. So. Uh, what we're talking about, as I say, is the 14 day challenge. Uh, we're, we're recording 14 days because it just runs to the end of the festival. Um, uh, obviously, we want you to keep making sound walks after that. Uh, what you'll find is that uh, it, it takes a long time to make a, a, a geolocated sound walk uh, because um, what you do need to do is you do need to check these things on the ground. Uh, there is a, a, a mechanism, um, Martin didn't show it to you, but there is a mechanism whereby you can uh, draw a line through a polygon and listen to what uh, a person walking on the ground might hear. Uh, but of course, you don't hear the uh, natural ambience, the existing ambience. The great thing about lockdown is there's been far less mechanical noise. Um, so no aircraft, uh, very little uh, construction and a reduced amount of traffic. Uh, but what you have to realize is that after lockdown, uh, your sound will might well have those kinds of things. Uh, your listener might well have those kinds of things to contend with. Uh, so you just need to think about that when you're you're making your sound walk. Uh, the, the other thing about the sound walk, which is great on the Echoes thing, is you can go back and change it. You can add to it. So during the 14 days, I've uh, promised Andrew that I will continue to walk the um, high-low walk. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, I'll be able to add more sounds to the walk as it goes on. So uh, do give it a try. Um, what we uh, would love you to do is just practice like crazy. I mean, you know, 
um, uh, have a go with this stuff. It's fun. In fact, you know, before the end of the weekend, um, register on Walk, Listen, Create and have a look through the site. But go around the house, go around each room in your apartment, go around, you know, even if you just walk outside briefly, uh, your, you know, short amount of exercise we're allowed to do under lockdown. In fact, I think we're not as restricted. I think you can go for a walk for practically the whole day. Um, but actually take some recordings. Uh, with your smartphone, try it out, see what it's like and uh, have a go on Audacity or something similar and, and just have a play with it. And it's great fun. I mean, that's that's what it's all about, is having fun doing this. Uh, as people have mentioned in the chat, there are quite a lot of tutorials on the internet uh, and you can find those uh, uh, fairly easily. There are some great events coming up in the Greenwich Sound Image Festival. Um, Andrew briefly spoke about them at the beginning. Uh, do go and have a look at um, uh, their site and uh, go and have uh, explore others. Uh, we actually run fortnightly on Walk, Listen, Create. We run fortnightly cafes, as we call them. Uh, they don't cost a lot. They cost the price of a, cafe, a coffee or two. Uh, I think it's three euros. Um, uh, and uh, people say to me, well, why is it in euros? And it's just infuriating, I know, but it's because we're about to become a not-for-profit uh, registered uh, in Belgium in the EU. Uh, you know, let's not go there. Um, but uh, it's just three euros to join the cafe. The cafes are people who are practitioners at the moment who want to talk about what they're doing and they want to provoke a discussion. Uh, so Tuesday week, uh, we have a cafe with uh, people from Slovenia who are coming into the cafe to talk about the work that they're doing in Slovenia. And funny enough, they use the Echoes um, app and one of their pieces has been shortlisted for the Sound Walk September Award. So uh, definitely uh, uh, worth popping along to the cafe. It's uh, Tuesday night every two weeks at seven o'clock. Um, the uh, archive of Walk, Listen, Create is pretty massive. As I say, it's about uh, 350 and growing. Uh, we noted that Rebecca had mentioned various um, different sound walks that she tried out, um, all of which I think are on the Walk, Listen, Great platform. The great news uh, is, um, Rebecca, you'll discover that uh, Duncan Speakman is actually on our advisory board. Uh, so, you, uh, you know, there's a chance to actually talk to the creators of this kind of stuff and, uh, and, and, and find out what they're making and what they're doing at the moment. Um, please submit to Shorelines. Um, it's a really simple uh, project, uh, but it's a really lovely one. It's just get people reading aloud uh, other people's work and having that opportunity. And what we intend to do eventually uh, is to geolocate those pieces and therefore give people the opportunity of walking to collect an anthology of work uh, as they scoop around uh, part of the Greenwich foreshore. So uh, think about that um, and do keep in touch. I mean, that's basically what it's all about. Uh, we'd, we'd love to hear from you and we want to uh, perhaps hand back to Andrew if he's still there um, to, to round us up. But I was just going to say, uh, Andrew, you might want to have the last word. Uh, Martin, do you want to say anything just before I hand back to Andrew? I just want to say thank you all for, for, for being with us here and if you have any questions just uh, contact us and we'll try to answer the questions and help you with your walks and enjoy creating those sound walks. It's a great, great, great fun. <laughs> and uh, we hand back to Andrew. Thank you very much, Andrew, for having us. No, thank you both. That's been absolutely incredible, really amazing. And I'm really excited to see lots of enthusiasm in the chat from everybody. Uh, and we really want to hear all your sound walks. So please do remember to tag us and uh, tag the festival. And what we'll do is at the end, uh, we will share everybody's sound walks so that uh, you can all listen to what everyone else has been getting up to. Even if you're not in Greenwich, do remember you can still make your own sound walk and just tag the festival anyway and then you'll be part of our uh, network of uh, activities and events. So really looking forward to hearing what you guys create. As Andrew mentioned, we do have uh, an array of really exciting things coming up as part of the festival. We've got exhibitions that are in Greenwich, but uh, I've been furiously uh, buzzing around with a 360 camera filming those and with a uh, surround sound ambisonic microphone. So I'm creating uh, 3D uh, documentation of those uh, 
which will be going up online. We'll have a special online festival tab. So if you haven't already, do sign up for that on the uh, Eventbrite page. And that means that we'll have the, your contact details so we can send you the link for that so that you'll be able to experience the festival remotely. Um, we have a fantastic talk coming up on the 20th. Uh, Peter Ajay, the sound artist uh, who uh, ha currently has an exhibition in the Queen's House in Greenwich, uh, is going to be giving a talk about that uh, sound work uh, on the 20th. Uh, it's 5 p.m. on the 20th, I think it's 5 p.m. Uh, and uh, so please do sign up for a ticket there. That's going to be a really incredible uh, talk. That's happening again via Zoom. So uh, please do book up for that. Um, and uh, yeah, just keep in touch. Um, thank you again, everyone for being here to Marcin and to Andrew for this incredible, exciting workshop. And I can't wait to hear all the amazing things that you create. So thank you so much everyone for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you, bye bye. Thank you. Thank you.